two, one. Hello, hello, my friends. This is Kianga, and welcome to meeting five of the Regenerative Finance uh, Aligned Voter Committee, Constitutional Voter Committee. Um, let's see, as we gather, the recording is active, so um, everything from this point on will be available for those who want to tune in to the conversation later. I, I wondered, Retro, if you have it handy or if anyone could put in the chat the meeting announcement on the forum for today, because we'll actually have like a, a kind of inside meta <laughs> business focus for the meeting today. And um, I'll, I'll walk through what's in that forum post. But before we start that meet that part of the meeting, as people are are coming in to the voice channel, um, I just wanted to share some personal thoughts and um, space exponential. And I communicated a little bit about this before the meeting. Just prior to this call, I was on a Twitter space with Gitcoins ra Radio. And it was a really, I think it's still ongoing because the conversation was so good that they're like continuing the um, continuing the space. And uh, I think I've tweeted it on my on my Twitter if anyone wants to check it out afterwards. But it was a conversation a, a lot about Balaji's network state and some critiques of that. And, you know, it's basically a community of lots of impact and refi people and Gitcoin folks. And it was a good reminder for me coming into this call as to, you know, why I've been very passionate, interested about helping to launch the refi CBC, why I've been involved in MakerDAO from the beginning, um, and certainly some of what I personally hope for from the AVC, even though I think we're not really at a point to speak about official AVC policy about this, but it's it's the, the things that are going on in the world outside of MakerDAO um, and the urgency of the many flavors of challenge, crisis, um, and 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 the people who are really doing some very interesting thinking grassroots work globally, um, so many levels and layers to a discourse, to the discourse about what we're trying to achieve. When I say we, I mean, that's like, there's many different versions of that. You one, one topic in particular was I think a critique that some people in the regenerative finance community have of um, how some prominent members are positioning themselves within like the context of the World Economic Forum, for example, or the United Nations. And like, is that a betrayal of what ReFi, which is of course still a movement that is emerging. So, you know, as, what it, whatever you might read one day about who is ReFi and what is ReFi, I mean, it's, you know, you could read the exact opposite uh, on another day. So, um, you know, it's not only, I think, refi CVC within MakerDAO that needs to define itself with respect to MakerDAO. And then I think, you know, the important questions that were in the Discord chat about, well, what's refi CVC's intention or ambition with respect to the world outside of MakerDAO? Um, I just wanted to share with, uh, you know, you, I've known a lot of you, most of you in the room. <laughs> those whose identities I know um, for quite some time. And so it's it's definitely a personal um, mission and concern that I have about the world that um, is inspiring me and certainly hope that what we do at Refi AVC can be very potent. Um, in bringing, bridging, actually, 
not just conversations and talk, because certainly for myself, that's a frustration um, that I was all about, you think? Was that was that a hot mic? Yeah, OK. Um, yeah, so. Well, well, I lost my train of thought there, but I think I just want to end on what was I saying? Oh. Oh, right. One of my personal mish ambitions here is that there's a sense of doing, there's a sense of action, there's a sense that, you know, we can have so many spaces, we can go to conferences, we can talk, talk, talk. And I'm definitely in my work here with Maker, I'm reacting to, I think, my own frustrations in refi or in my local community in upstate New York, um, where I feel we're just really going in circles in philanthropy at large, venture cap, venture philanthropy. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm very much hopeful that the time that we all spend together um, at this intersection of regenerative finance and what, what Maker's doing can, can be some rubber that meets the road, that hits the road. And, and how does that occur? You know, something that we're going to find out together. Um, so with, with that space, I'd love to have you come off mute and share whatever's on your mind on just the general theme of why you've decided to take so much time and invest real capital. Like it's real to um, decide to go get some MKR, go through signing messages and all that, which I'm really excited that you've done. Um, but wanted to create some space before we start the business meeting to also hear from you about, you know, what's inspiring you in the world right now. And as it relates to, um, why you decided to become a um, REFI CBC member. Thank you so much, Kianga. Thank you for the, the opening to, to share a little bit of uh, my personal journey. Um, I think, you know, honestly, it was my connection and my relationship that, with Kianga that ultimately uh, was, I think, the, um, the biggest sort of motivator for me to join uh, the maker community, but in delving into um, what the community is trying to do, reading, just immersing myself in the Constitution, the documentation, the latest amendments, I feel like there is really something that is sort of simmering underneath the surface um, that it may be really, really difficult to articulate, uh, which is kind of ironic given how many tens of thousands of words uh, that the governance documentation is amounting to. Um, so I think we're, we're, we're all kind of converging in this sort of general direction of groping for something, something new that is coming towards us. And I feel that um, in the world right now, with so much that is going on, the chaos, the sort of disintegration of the, of the traditional structures of, of finance, um, of communities even, I feel like this sort of crisis is coming to a head so that we are pushed to awaken and to begin to venture into territories that we really don't know how to sort of articulate um, the contours of and the entire point is that we can't do it alone and so it's it's very um it, it's very frustrating and i'm sure i don't need to say that to people on this call i've heard a little bit about um kianga's journey through um, the maker ecosystem and how she's integrated into the community and i'm sure that as exhilarating and th thrilling as and rewarding as it can be it can often be just as equally frustrating and and demoralizing because in the end um, it would be so much easier right if if one person could have the intuition and just execute on that um, but i think the entire point of what we're doing and coming together is that we can no longer do that and so the the art and the science that we now have to find together is how do we sort of leverage the intuition and the talents of individual people and have that cohere into a greater whole. And this is something that I am absolutely compelled and just I, I, my conviction is 100% on this, that we cannot do this, achieve this, and remain the same as we are today. That we have to deeply change on the level, not just of our, our personality, not our superficial personality, but in the way that we actually think and act and know and 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 have agency as, as epistemic actors. 
Um, so everything about us has to change, but how do we do that? How do we sort of look to the future? And I think that there are hints. There are hints that have already been given to us by like great thinkers and, and philosophers and technologists in the past. Um, but again, it comes with, uh, you know, who has unique individual knowledge and experiences to share with us? We all do. Um, so how do we build the forums and communities to actually leverage that unique knowledge and expertise and service of the whole? So this is very, very personal to me. I feel deeply passionate about this. Um, I think this is a big, just like jumbled yarn, like a big riddle, a deep, deep, deep riddle that we're all facing. Um, and I hope that we can take the plunge together. And I've, I'm here in this room so that we can begin, so that I can begin to learn from you and that we can begin to figure this out together. So thank you, thank you, Kianka, for the, for the space. And thank you all for being here. Wow, so well said. So well said. Um, I, I extend the invitation to anyone else who wants to come off mute before we dive into the official business meeting. Um, I know some of you are here because you kind of have to be. So you decided to follow um, Refi ABC as an aligned delegate. Um, for others, yeah, it's also useful. You're in the workforce, or you know, you're 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 keeping track. Uh, on behalf of uh, all the ABCs. But if there's anyone who wants to share your personal thoughts these days about uh, the transition, I guess I can say, that we're all going through, um, and, and I guess what this CVC is talking about when we, we talk about the regeneration or, you know, kind of this idea, this broad idea of, of the systems that are failing us, um, which obviously everyone I think who's had anything to do with Maker has a perspective on that, um, alternative currencies. So just uh, anyone is welcome to share any personal thoughts on that huge topic. Or not, that's cool too. <laughs> we can um, move on to the business agenda. So as I mentioned in the Discord, um, you know, we'll, we don't need to take the whole hour here. Um, I thought it was a good moment to just quickly review, I guess, where we've been over the past month. Everyone here in this room live certainly has been on the journey of um, the end game pre-game launch and spinning up the cvcs now we're calling them aligned voter committees um, the permissionless nature of new delegate contracts spinning up and i mean it's kind of pretty remarkable that <laughs> <laughs> All this has occurred in the last month, and I think if you've been, um, you know, kind of part of this journey, you know, there was a time not long ago when Rune was talking about he was going to run like three different CVCs because I think the th the, the the view was like nobody's going to understand how to do this or want to do this or be bothered doing this, and we've actually seen, you know like all of this organic interest that I, I find very inspiring. So um, I personally feel, that's, that's redundant to say I personally, I think, but I feel that it's been a great success overall for the organization, uh, the DAO, and um, our experience with Acre DAOs uh, creating ReFi and, um, Space Exponential joining us as a member, and I've also followed, and I'm I'm Kianga as the moderator, um, intimately involved, obviously, and seeing all the other uh, groups that have formed, and I've listened um, to the recordings, and I've attended a bunch of those other meetings as well. So I think it's been terrific. We got the big uh, tome of amendments last week that we'll get into um, that 
you know, I think just so I can maybe outline how I'm beginning to understand the the dynamics or the rhythm of these early pregame days. You know, we did not have that text for the, we sort of have like three inter overlapping iterations that are happening, right? We have the scope texts that are published and effective. And then at the same time, we, we, we seem to have amendments that are being voted. And then we're also looking at amendments that are being proposed. <laughs> so we almost were working with like three different versions of reality at the same time. Um, but what dropped last week was by far, I think, you know, the first, it was sort of a restructuring writ large in some respects of what we've been working off through the past month of April. So I do wanna talk a little bit about that in general. Um, but refi for the month of April, you know, I would say our first meeting was on Zoom and it was very administrative. It was very much getting oriented. Um, it was helpful. We did have Rune on that call. It was helpful just to um, hear from him some of his comments about how all of these elements are working. And personally, I'm also feeling the need to wait a little bit to really try to run with the newest changes until there's a little bit more discussion or presentation or communication, education. I'm sure that's coming and it's just been a matter of, of just timing and lots of stuff that people are trying to do that the communication about the changes is maybe lagging a little bit and, and that that's gonna help us a lot so that before we get super bogged down in trying to understand what it all means that maybe we're going to have a little bit more help than it feels like we have today. So our first meeting was was really in the 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 meta of what CBCs even are, how we're supposed to do these subcommittee meetings, what the expectations are for the quarter. Our second meeting we had um kind of a a, a a vision exercise of like what the world looks like when MakerDAO achieves unbiased world currency status for DAI. And there was a nice conversation thinking, okay, well, we've solved poverty and there's an even playing field without regard for your geography or, you know, economic system in which you're born into, uh, you know, that there's, there's much more possibility um, for people's contribution and the way that they can live in the world and in their communities um, to, for, for that to, for this prosperity to be available for all. Um, so we talked a little bit about like the end, the literal end game, if we were wildly successful in this project. Um, then our third meeting, we focused on the ambassador program and what MakerDAO's Latin American community looks like, um, what some of the opportunities actually are for the DAO on, on the business side of things. You know, one of the things I, I hope people will think about when you think about the refi CVC is not just like, oh, the, those are the, that's the charity group. That's, that's the impact group. They're, they're just gonna like take the extra money and sprinkle green fairy dust all over the place. But that actually, you know, we can be a source of very impactful business perspective. And one example of that was you know, our conversation about the money use case, the currency use case of DAI uh, being helpful for the ALM priorities that we're, we're, we're all focused on. That, you know, what the liabilities for MakerDAO look like when people are holding DAI for payments or peer-to-peer um, -peer money-like transactions is incredibly favorable for um, risk management. And that I think Monet Supply was on that call 
And that when we think about the advisory councils or expertise or inputs, then, you know, that thinking through how folks in Latin America are using DAI, maybe fintech payments expertise is some of some of the advisory councils specialties that we we want to bring into the mix. Um, because modeling the behavior of a user of DAI that's not, you know, primarily kind of LPing on DeFi apps, you know, that's that will be critical. So while we have these conversations that are very like impact or regenerative focus, um, I, I think we also want them to have application for the main business that MakerDAO is doing and all the problems we're trying to solve. Um, our final meeting or of, the, of the month last week, we uh, had PVL, who's posted a lot, pa Pavel, who's posted a lot on the forum about AI and machine learning and et cetera. So we, we got a little bit of a dialogue and conversation about what all of that even is. <laughs> and then, um, you know, there's, there's, of course, the places within the scopes and throughout the end game where, you know, obviously it's, it's central. It's central to how business and work will be done for the decentralized ecosystem, um, the, the, the uh, protocol, uh, the pot of money, <laughs> like words are escaping me, but you all know what I'm talking about, the pot of money, um, and the purpose system, the, the actual purpose system, which has been proposed to be entirely focused on funding open source AI. So directly tying into this sort of leveling of the playing field that we touched on in our second meeting. So um, I think we've, we've operated at a kind of a, a high level. Uh, I, I've tried to be very, very diligent about the rules and making sure we also were, were really focused on a particular scope on the week that it was in focus. Um, and we'll, we tried, we've tried to kind of reserve more of the scope level maker governance business details for async, um, a little bit of the async work which I think, you know, I mean, given it's been just a month, I think it's great. We've had comments on our Google Doc um, and delegates have been awesome about sort of following up with things that we've talked about in these meetings or maybe things that I've posted on the forum. And we've seen that reflected in your comments about your actual votes and just other async posts on the forum. So that has been really great, and thank you. Um, and let me just pause and see if anyone has anything you want to add at this point. There's nothing specific in the chat. OK, great. I'll just keep going with um, Kianga Radio a version of the meeting. Um, let's see, so Retro posted at the top of the chat our meeting post on the forum today so i'm i'm looking at that as i go through today the protocol engineering scope framework is in focus and i mean here's this is this is a big one because we've had protocol engineering as a core unit um dissolve and Officially, the, the team members that are leaving, their last day was yesterday, I guess Sunday, officially. Um, we've also, though, seen through various scope edits um, and forum posts that there are three ecosystem actors that are doing technical work. We have Pullup, we have DWiz, and we have SAS. Um, and we're seeing through the scopes 
a uh, move toward project-based funding. Um, so yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot in the current <laughs> version we could talk about. Um, then there's the weekly poll that's, that's making sure that all of those changes gets merged appropriately. Um, and then of course, there's the amendment that we saw last week that talks more about maker chain. Um, we got a little more detail about a new governance token and a new stable coin and a technical process by which, you know, MKR as we know it today and DAI as we know it today will continue to exist. But what, what, what for my sense of, of what's planned, and I feel like this is sort of osmosis at this point. I don't know if I read it in a forum post on Discord or I like had a dream about it, but that the the um the rebranding is like a whole new name and tokens, not just the subdow tokens. But there's a new governance token, and there we we we're seeing in the the new amendment a specific ratio that's been provided, and that this new a decentralized subdao world, where Maker Core becomes like this ossified protocol that kind of sets risk parameters in a sense, and then this subdao ecosystem that is where the vaults will live that's where individual business or diamonding for the world occurs like th th in this big kind of galaxy version and retro you had this i just love that image in the presentation you gave at ETH denver explaining this um The technical descriptions of what those things are seem like they have a placeholder in the, in the new MIP 107. That, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> is the extent of probably my ability to talk about what's in 107. Um, I got a, a, a comment in the chat so far from Frontier Research that my summary seems seems right. PBG is saying um, regarding, okay, I'll get back to that PBG, um, papers, typing. So at this point, I'll, I'll, I'll just pause if there's anyone, again, any of the delegates on the call who want to come off mic and give any reflections you have about the protocol engineering scope, how it's changing. You know, we, we had a um, discussion about multi-chain strategy um, that was on the forum. Derek from Protocol Engineering, who's uh, who's stepped away from the project. Um, not a ton of back and forth on that thread. Not sure to what extent the new proposed MIP 107 is sort of directly correlated to how the conversation has been framed on the forum over the last couple of years. Um, right, yes, papers mentioning the 20K Purpose Fund was revised. Um, and yeah, and I think I mentioned this, this is when I was I'm referring to the, the Purpose Fund earlier, how I've read that. Although my recollection is more from a post that Rune made than necessarily the amendments, what the amendments might say, um, but that the the whole structure of the purpose fund is is like changed. So there's there's not going to be anything from the purpose fund that goes directly to charities, right? It's it's for this open source AI, and so the idea is that the impact that we thought giving money to to certain charitable projects would have. Instead, the development of the AI tools that any kind of uh, project or business could be more successful um, 
you know, so th these would be tools that they could use that would allow them to compete with information that, you know, the most well-financed projects um, or those who could otherwise only afford what the private markets, private industry is going to be producing that Maker wants to be on the vanguard of this alternative. Um, and where I where I've noticed the, the conversation about charity, like specific, just donations to charity, being more in, encouraged among someone correct me, but being more encouraged among the you know maybe delegates or sub DAOs or even I don't know maybe if the CBCs or the ABCs can kind of compete on share on an individual ecosystem actor level um sharing their success through charity but that it's it's not going to be um sort of from a core perspective and expertise that makers going to be getting into directly funding charity um Anyone who wants to speak at any time, really, don't even wait for an invitation. Feel free to unmute yourself and just jump right in. Otherwise, I'll keep rambling. Um, okay, and the next comment from Frontier, do we have a particular view on new chain? Right, so I would say definitely not like a, a CBC or ABC official view um, speaking from, I think that the whole discussion of new chain, my understanding as Kianga from listening to some of the DBC calls, so sort of like the pre-constitution MIP and game calls, like this has been a very old idea within MakerDAO. Like from the beginning, there were earlier conversations about MakerDAO having its own chain. So it's a topic that I certainly think that the CBC should like get the whole story culturally about like the origin story of the idea of a maker chain and that conceptually it, it has a lot to do with the emergency shutdown not conceptually i mean actually it has a lot to do with the emergency shutdown and how to practically restart the project if that were ever triggered so i mean from just from that perspective like it sounds, it makes sense. I I think I I get it at a high level why Maker's own L1 would be required to fully launch, relaunch the project instead of just it just dying, <laughs> it being it being nuked if it um, in an emergency shutdown situation. Um, so that gets into I think a lot of really interesting core game theory and technical details that I hope there'll be lots of resources in the community for us to listen to um, and learn about. Um, and then, but then I, I also though do see, like I, I was spending some time today thinking about Bitcoin and what's going on over there and their new BRC20s and ordinals and what Taproot has meant for the Bitcoin network and where that's all going. And so it feels like in this winter, which is so deep, <laughs> you know, the opportunity to, to like go way back to first principles, go way back to school of like all the things I ever thought about crypto or anything about what's possible, you know, this is like the best time to um, revisit all of that, and that if if MakerDAO is has the resources and is in a position and solves the people problem. I mean, one of the things that has really attracted me to Endgame at the end of the day, and after being a critic for so long, was seeing that it it's attempting to, and I think the idea of it and the structure of it is profound, solving the human problem, like the human governance coordination problem. And that if Maker can 
can crack that. And I really don't think that there's any other DAO or any other decentralized project that has hit the ceiling of governance and operating at any kind of scale in a decentralized social way. Like no one's even come close to like what Maker's been through and the pain <laughs> Maker participants have experienced. And, you know, it being a project that is cash flow positive to a large degree, very con consequential. Um, so that's one of the biggest frontiers that I see that Maker's leading in right now, which is like, how do you really scale a chaotic group of unrelated people? And, you know, the new scopes kind of talk about this, the new MIP 101, uh, with the whole language around the alignments and inner incentives and self-interest. And, you know, I think it's very interesting the way that new pre the new definitions um, try to parse the human dynamics, right? So in some ways, if like Maker can crack the human problem to scale something like this, then having its own L1, yeah, I mean, it's just, yes, <laughs> let's do it. Um, okay, so, Raphael says in the chat, oh, let me let me see, what have I missed? Okay, Frontier, okay, those are my thoughts about new chain. Space says 100, so the, I guess you're getting a little hint of where refi CBC may be coming out on that. Um, paper says, previous discussion was just merging with Gnosis, I believe, before my time. And yeah, so since we're talking about protocol engineering scope, and I, you know, a real big challenge, obviously, right now is like, who's really still left? <laughs> who's really still working on engineering and maker? Like, do we know? Um, the new group pull up is like, you know, we're going to be Anon and, you know, we're not even going to have a facilitator. <laughs> I'm making, I'm making light of it. It's a very serious topic. Um, we, we're just going with the flow and I think we have to see. Um, I, I'm certainly the last person, and I think I don't I don't know that space you've got a coding background that I'm aware of, but you know we're not going to be the CVC that's going to be able to like double check with expertise what's happening on on the protocol. It's, it's really great, um, Shupi, to see you here because I know that's like a area that you're on top of. Um, you know, there's a new spell, I think, that just went up that's got code for launching Spark. Like, I'm scared to, t <laughs> this is not an insult on anyone. Oh, good. Oh, she says spells good. Okay. You know, it's just, it's a little bit nervous. It's, it's a little bit nerve wracking right now, I think it's fair to say, um, with the, with the transition of, of engineering resources, like exactly who's, who's on, who, who's, doing what and um you know the handoff that's happened and of course maker has 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 stood out in the ecosystem for being conservative and safe and like having really great best best practices so i'm sure that um that's being all managed with with the utmost care but certainly as a factual matter sitting here as the reify cvc um don't feel we have a lot of visibility in that transition that's happening right now um but i again i think that patience is really important right now as the workforce is adjusting and i'm certainly much rather people be focused on the work than um kind of <laughs> explaining things to me on calls. Not right now. I'm sure there's um, just so much to do. So let's see what's next. Paper says, how would emergency shutdown work better if all the collateral and die is on Ethereum? I've not followed how a new chain helps. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, the, again, like I, I, I'm not great probably technically explaining it, but just like my takeaway was more that if you really want to fork, if you really want to fork and fork away from the governance attacker, the ultimate way to do that is is to fork your L1, right? So that right now, I guess if there was a shutdown, and to your point, all the you know the, the settlement layer is still Ethereum. Maker can go ahead and shut down, but Maker can never completely isolate or like orphan die that's out there or the collateral that's out there. And so that's exactly why the ultimate end state would be maker having its own you know final settlement blockchain that's just again like my non expert noob take for for that topic um let's see right others in the comment are, are saying yeah in terms of who's working on technical work and this applies across the ecosystem right i mean there's the anonymity opportunity um and then there's an anonymity requirement in some places um i think that's clearly also related to the regulatory environment <laughs> and maybe people have concerns personally about their level of risk or responsibility frankly um and i think you know i think there's a there's a po it's positive refi cvc sees like tons we're very pro anon i think that's also uh, hopefully something that's come across. It's got terrific merits for inclusion. And, you know, I think a lot of things that, that are positive that, have, that don't have to do with kind of avoiding authority or any the, the sort of instant knee-jerk nefarious reasons people think, oh, they're going anonymous because they've got something to hide or they think they're doing something wrong. I mean, it, it is, of course, great for physical resiliency you know for for the ability for this product or the infrastructure to be trusted because there's no person i mean the whole premise of why we're even here in crypto right it's like no centralized points of failure on you know no one can be like blackmailed to change history of what occurred what the ledger says so to the extent that you've got people involved that are unknown, you know, that is pro trust in the system, but we then have to overcome how it's scary to not know <laughs> who's involved. Um, but, you know, I think crypto's figuring that out, makers attempting to figure that out. And it's, um, yeah, it's difficult. Like I miss the GNR. I'm sad Prose is not <laughs> on this call. Um, someone else whose last official day was Sunday. Um, and like, what does truly resilient project and, and financial system, what does that really look like in the future? Um, and how can that operate? You know, how can, an unbiased world currency. And if we understand that to mean permissionless, uh, uncensorable, you know, that doesn't fit well with a lot of entrenched powers and the way things work. And so, you know, even all of the legitimate arguments about privacy and you know, non-criminal activity, all that stuff. We are facing, we are facing a, a very, very difficult road 
to cause permissionless credit to exist in the world, to cause the ability for people to transact freely between one another. You know, there's a lot of friction and barriers and gates crashing down on us right now. So, you know, we have to, I think, be smart, be I believe, yeah, you, I'm a lawyer, I'm very pro law, I'm pro compliance, I'm also pro creativity. So like to what Space was saying at the top of the call, that by coming together, you know, we're greater than the sum of our parts, and we shouldn't rest at just capitulating of, you know, oh, here are your four boxes, choose these. You know, we don't necessarily have to say, oh, well, we're just going to be pirates. And so I, I'm personally also been excited to see the evolution of, I think, the t overall tone around compliance at MakerDAO and um, to say it's not either or, but it's like both and, like there's a path. There's a path, maybe we don't exactly know all the steps on the path, but there's a path to having unbiased, freely available currency for everybody to use money for people to use. And we can also comply with the law and we've got no desire to evade laws and we do not wanna empower bad actors of which there are many. And we've got a lot of egg on our face as an industry that, you know, it seems like Maker Dow is in a really fantastic position to, to change the narrative, to, to, to do the doing, the building um, that, that proves why the well, that's sort of like is the evidence for maybe why certain regulations are needed, right? Like if the blockchain can tell you, then why does does this organization need to register? Just like for example, now I'm going off a little bit of a tangent, but I think it's Im important in the context of you know even engineering, which is ultimately got to decide all of this, which is to say, and, and I don't think this point gets enough airtime. The regulatory regime, I'm sitting here in the United States about registering or, or being a member of a self-regulatory organization like the, um, you know, the SEC requires or the CFTC requires for uh, derivatives of commodities or SEC for securities, all about reporting, disclosure, all of that. Like, what were the reasons over the past hundred years that we ended up in this quagmire of regulations, right? There was like fraud, there was banking collapse, you know, there were all these things that occurred all the way up until what we experienced over the weekend in the United States with another bank failure. And, you know, the point that I think we can all make as a, as a project is well, we, 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 you, you get the policy goals. You get to achieve safety, soundness, protection without all of the approaches that have built up, calcified over the years for the centralized actors. So that's a little bit of a, <laughs> a speech to the choir, um, but just a little bit of, of why I think you know, maker can have its cake and eat it too, um, somewhat, and that the the transition of the workforce or participants to being anon, um, which seems to be underway, is I think a positive. Um, even though you know th there's 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 sort of some difficulty or change that's uncomfortable in how we are all able to relate to one another as part of that, but that it's. I think an absolutely essential part of the resiliency and the ability to achieve one day, you know, the, the ultimate goal for die um, that I that I think so far refi CVC's, you know, been focused on and talking about, you know, focusing on die as the unbiased world currency and defining, you know, what does that look like for the world? But then again, like, what does that look like organizationally for maker and the policies around that? Um, yep, papers saying the anons have to be around to build up some reputation. 100%. 100%. Um, 
And then uh, B do bop boop bop says, oh yes, the head the AI putting Chegg out of business. College kids saving money is a win. Pencil another win for Open AI. When Cyborg Dow. I mean, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay as far away from like some of this AI stuff as I can in a way personally, but it's like it, the the the, the the change is absolutely mind blowing. There was another headline that I saw about um, IBM. Was it IBM's? Like, oh, we're going to be able to lay off like 6,500 people in like five minutes because that's just going to all be AI. Like, not in 10 years, but like in 10 days. I mean, that's that's how that that it really does feel like that's upon us. And then, um, so yeah, just certain back to there being all of these like very serious structural changes that are going to affect society and are affecting people all over the world. All of us are very, very vulnerable and working on a money alternative, a credit alternative, a finance alternative, you know, it's like, an awesome uh, opportunity to be a part of, you know, wherever that can be a solution to all this stuff that's happening. Um, let's see. Well, this call didn't, wasn't short. <laughs> Actually, it was like eight minutes to the top of the hour. So I'll just, um, the other things that were in the meeting notes were a little bit of business about async work, we as a CVC, um, you know, want to learn a little bit more about what ecosystem scope is going to be organizing, ways that it's helpful to have all the AVCs kind of communicate in the same places in the same ways and what that structure is going to look like. Um, aside from that, we'll, we're, we're talking about moving to a notion, moving our um, CVCs I don't even know what to call it, but just sort of platform for going through specific amendments to language or, you know, having more updates for this call. Um, you know, Acre Invest put together a kind of homepage that we're hosting for the refi CVC. So that's probably something that would be replaced with a notion, if a notion page if if we decide to use that tool. Um, and I guess if there's nothing specific that's going to be required from the ecosystem or provided, then we'll probably just go ahead and do that over the next, you know, toward the end of the quarter, um, you know, go ahead and merge what we now have as a homepage and these Google Docs and try and have like a, a notion that um, has everything. And, but for now, you know, any Feel free to mention any of us on on the forum or on Discord if you're an aligned delegate following or have some feedback on how the communications async um, have, have been working out. And then I guess I, we don't really have tons of time. We don't need it. The other last bit in the post was about aligned voter committees and aligned delegates expectations, responsibilities, and interactions. So do we have anyone here who's been reading the new um, Atlas alignment um, framing? If you have anything you'd like to add, See, Bona Publica hosting meetings with the intentions to cover one of the five scopes in the weekly rotation. Okay, so I think we've been doing incredibly well. I think we're one of like the top performers among CBCs of, of really nailing the week in focus scope. So we will continue to do that. Um, I think it's quite useful that all the CBCs are on sync each week on the same scope. 
I think just from like a shit, like a mental for all of us involved in governance, it just will be such an easier mental load if you can go through the week knowing that this is sort of high level, what everyone's focused on and talking about. Um, even though obviously also I support and I think it's going to be great to the experiments of what people want to talk about and do in those meetings. But from like a business perspective, a governance perspective, I do think it's useful that there's a requirement that all the CVCs are on the same scope every week. And yeah, I recognize that in the new proposal, Bona Publica, that um, there's, um, since there's five scopes, we get to circle back twice in a quarter on the same scope. And then I, I think there's also then time at the end of the quarter to be more focused on the overall like position document um, validation or verification, voting, finalization work. Um, so we definitely want to stay on that schedule. I'm not sure how strict it is in the language um, and how that relates to like your the rewards or the participation scoring. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's very valuable having like the focus and alignment <laughs> on um, what topics we're hitting, even if, you know, I, I anticipate in the future refi CVCs not going to be totally always going line by line, like maker specifics of, of what's in there. But we always will use that as a theme um, to develop our policy. So Jansky then saying, um, Jansky, let's not discount the potential for new contributors to bring valuable perspectives and ideas. We can still establish a system of checks and balances to ensure responsible decision making. So I probably missed what that was in response to. Because I mean, I think I'm probably the most pro new contributors, and I've been so much an outsider in many respects with different ideas than the crowd. So you can definitely count on Refi ABC to be um, extremely pro what new voices and new people and new ideas have to bring in, in any 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 measure. Um, also, there was an earlier comment that you had about reputation being important, but that our decision-making process is transparent and inclusive. We will then see who has earned the reputation and who has not, right? So I'll, exactly like there's reputation and there's also accountability. And then I think I'll, what the end game is also encouraging by requiring the documentation of of absolutely everything that drives what happens is to have a kind of transparency and ability to automate things that are today opaque, hard to understand, hard to see what's going on. Um, so, okay, <laughs> it's a little bit uh, more of a back and forth there on some specifics in the chat, but I guess I'll leave it there. It's one minute before the top of the hour. Didn't see any of you guys like chomping at the bit to come off mic, so hopefully it's okay. I just talked the whole time. And um, if there's anything anyone wants to say before we wrap up, now's the time. All right. Awesome. It's great to see all of your avatars uh, and your names. Thanks for joining. And see you around. Next week, we'll be back. Same time, same place. Thanks, everybody. Bye.